Welcome back to chapter 10, where we are now in section 10.4, thinking about how our energy problems from chapter 7 uh, can be revisited here in chapter 10, but with one additional term to consider. So in this example, we have a ball that's going to roll down a hill. So we can draw the picture where we have the ball moving with a speed of 2 meters per second at the beginning. And it's not just moving, it is rolling. So we have an initial velocity and an initial um, angular velocity. There is a hill here whose height is 30 centimeters, which is going to be 0 0.3 meters. And you can always confirm that for yourself by setting up the unit conversion when we're dividing by 100 centimeters per meter. Then we're asked to find the ball's speed at the bottom of the hill when it is moving at some unknown final speed and it's been rolling this whole time. So when we look at the before and after situations, this is the before at the start of the hill when we set up our energy problem. And this is our after at the bottom of the hill when we're trying to figure out how fast it's moving. So if we set up our standard toolkit, which is thinking about all of these ideas before and after, we have kinetic energy, the regular kinetic energy, which we, we ask ourselves, are we moving? We have this new kinetic energy of rotation, where we're going to ask ourselves, are we rotating? which is different than moving. We are going to ask ourselves about the potential energy from gravity. So we ask ourselves, are we higher? And then we have the potential energy of a spring, where we ask ourselves, is there a spring? All right. And after all of those questions, we will see if there is a work term. This kind of setup of writing out all of the terms in this table, it's not necessary to solve the problem. Um, it's, it's very useful setup though, if we aren't sure if we've accounted for all the energy types. By forcing ourselves to look for every single type of energy in every single situation before and after, then we can be confident that we've looked all of the places we need to. So we ask ourselves, are we moving at the start of the problem? In the before situation, we are given that initial speed. There's no guessing here. We are definitely moving at the start of the problem because we're given that initial, that, that initial speed. We ask ourselves, are we rotating? We are rolling without slipping the entire time. So if we are moving, then we are also rotating. By having us roll, those two terms have to be together in the problem. Either they are both there or they are both um, zero. Are we higher at the start of the problem? We are. We look, we're at the top of a hill, so MGH. And is there a spring? There's no spring at the beginning of the problem. Okay, we ask ourselves, are we moving at the end of the problem? Remember from back in chapter 7, this is never meant to be a guess. We either have that information or we're looking for it. We are looking for that final speed. That is our specific unknown that we're solving for. And because we are rolling without slipping the entire time, then we are also going to be rotating with a final angular speed at the end of the problem, too. We ask ourselves, are we higher at the end? The answer is no, we are not higher. And is there a spring at the end of the problem? The answer would be no, there is no spring. And then we double check, is there a work term? What we're looking for here is some additional information about force. We are either pushing or pulling on it, or there's air resistance or friction. And because we don't slip, there's no energy lost to friction. And so none of those other situations are here either. Our work term would be no. So if we think back to the original energy balance equation, energy before, plus work added
equals energy after. And now we can plug in the terms that we have and we'll start to solve. So in the before column, we have three different terms. We can write those out. So we have one half times mv initial squared plus one half times i omega initial squared plus mgh for the work because we said no we'll just put plus zero and then for energy after we have two terms that are not zero so one half mv final squared plus one half i omega final squared okay so we see with this setup here there was a lot that we did to set the problem up. We haven't done any math yet. All of this on our board so far is physics. This is the really essential amount of setup and preparation that we want to be doing in every energy problem because we need to remember the goal for this whole class is not to get to the number at the end as quick as possible, but to understand the process of getting through that um, problem solving by being given information and knowing what to do with that information. So if you need to pause the video here to write anything else down here, please do, because I'm gonna to have to erase this top part. On your page, you'd never wanna erase anything. You'd be able to keep going, but I've only got this small little um, whiteboard here. So I'm gonna erase it so I can get to the number part of the problem. But if we think back to our standard problem solving, picture is step one, given information is step two, Finding our unknown is step three, and this is an additional kind of setup for chapter seven and this section specifically. Then we write down the equation that we have as step four. Okay. So now that we've determined the equation that we have, I'm going to bring it to the very top of the board. So the only difference I'm going to make between this bottom written out thing and the top one is I'm just not going to add the plus zero from work. So we have 1 half mv initial squared plus 1 half i omega initial squared plus mgh on the left equals 1 half mv final squared plus 1 half i omega final squared. So that's what we had at the bottom that I've now brought to the top. So I'm going to erase that too so that we have plenty of space when we get through the problem solving. All right. So there's a couple of things that we need to think about that are specific to chapter 10. So first of all, we need to figure out the moment of inertia for this particular object. We are talking about a ball. And so a solid sphere has a moment of inertia of two-fifths m r squared. So we can plug in those numbers that we have here. So for this ball, and this is the moment of inertia at the beginning, but also at the end, because the ball doesn't change shape in this situation. The mass here is 2. The radius is 10 centimeters, but we know that we can't plug centimeters into this, so it's going to be 0.1 meters. We're dividing by 100. 0 0.1 squared and so that moment of inertia that we're looking for is 2 fifths times 2 times 0 0.1, and only the 0 0.1 is squared. And we're going to get 0 0.008 kilograms meters squared. So that's going to be important to us. The other thing to recognize is that at the start of the problem, our omega initial is equal to V initial. Those are not two separate unknowns, which means that if we want to know what the initial angular speed is, we can divide both sides by R here. And so the initial regular linear speed is two uh, meters per second, and the radius is 0 0.1. And so we have 20 radians per second. It is also important, though, that we recognize that for the final angular velocity, we can write that in terms of the um, 
final velocity and the um, radius, which means that that's something that we're going to use when we're plugging stuff in here as well. Okay, so so far what I've done is stuff that is really specific to chapter 10. It's the extra pieces that we might need to be aware of or paying attention to as we finish this problem up. But now we're going to take this top equation and we're going to plug in numbers that we have. So one half mass, mass is two, times velocity, that's two and that's going to get squared, plus one half i, i is 0 0.008, times the initial um, angular speed, which is 20, and that's squared, plus mgh, which is two times 9.8, times 0 0.3. That's the whole left side. That entire left side can be um, calculated. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So we've got all of these together. We don't have to do them as separate things. Our calculator can just take all of those terms. And we're going to get 11.48, okay, 11.48. So this left side here, all three of these terms, when we multiply them together, end up being 11.48. So 11.48, and now we're going to get to the right side, is equal to 1 half mass is 2 times our unknown final velocity squared plus 1 half I is 0 0.008, and omega final, we need to put this in parentheses, is our V final that we don't know about, times the radius, 0 0.1, and that gets squared. So let's simplify this a little bit. The left side, side is going to stay 11.48, like we calculated. 1 half times 2 is 1, so this becomes V final squared. Plus, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 1 half times 0 0.008, and then I'm going to divide that by 0 0.1 squared, because the 0 0.1 is squared, but it's on the bottom. So we're basically trying to find all of the numbers on that second term that are attached to um, the V final squared. And we're going to get 0 0.4 V final squared. And to make it really clear, we took the 1 half, we took the 0 0.08, and we took the 0 0.1, which is squared, and that's where that 0 0.4 number came from. So if we look on this right side, if we look on this right side, we have v final squared plus 0 0.4 v final squared. That becomes 1.4 v final squared. It's kind of like if we had 2x plus 3x, that becomes 5x. Okay, so we can divide both sides by 1.4. I'm going to keep going over here. So 11.48 divided by 1.4 is equal to 8.2. And that 8.2 is equal to the speed that we're looking for squared. So we'll take the square root of 8.2 to get our final velocity. And we're going to get 2.86, 2.86 meters per second. All right. So we see that this um, full whiteboard worth of stuff is the math part. And these pieces were the extra bits of physics that we had to think about from chapter 10. And then we plugged everything in. We first calculated what the left side looked like. That's why I stayed using blue. And then we um, wrote in all of the given information for the right side and then solved for our unknown of 2.86 meters per second. Our last check to see if things make sense that ball rolled downhill. We definitely needed to expect a speed that was faster than what it was at the top of the hill. And since 2.86 meters per second is a bigger number than 2 meters per second, that satisfies our kind of simple check. As always, you can rewatch this video as needed. Um, remember that we erased the whole first 
uh, whiteboard worth of material, but you can always go back to the beginning of the video and watch it. That first whiteboard of material was all the key physics setup, and then we did a couple of extra key physics ideas um, on this board too. So I will see you in the next video.